Kelle. I can't wait for this. Julia was so looking forward for your session today. And Maureen, what can you say about Julia? Oh, all day. <laughs> I, I want to jump right into it because we have such a limited amount of time. So, um, you know, today it's my pleasure for all of you tuning in to introduce um, Julia Keller, a, a family newborn photographer, an educator, and so much more. And today, Julia is going to both inspire and educate all of you. And what really grabbed my attention when we were talking about this master class is, you know, understanding the changes that are happening in the world and our economy and, and, and as people we've changed. So in Julia's words, you know, we can either wallow and let it be more of the same or we can believe that we can make it better. And Julia is gonna go into that detail today on the importance of changing. And yes, we only have an hour, but if you know Julia, she's, you can find her in, in her education group. She has so much knowledge. So I'm a big believer in embracing change and that you know, we need to be ready to pivot our business in the changed economy. And Julia is gonna peel back those layers today and open up your eyes to what's happening so you can grow your business to surge ahead. So thank you a million times over, Julia, for sharing your knowledge with us today. And to all of you, I welcome Julia Keller. Thank you so much, Maureen. I, I, um, I, it's an honor. It really is. A, I'm just so tickled to be asked to come here today, broadcasting to you live from my home, home office in Bend, Oregon. Uh, you know, things are going to change no matter what. The world is just always going to change. And uh, we can always know that things will never stay the same. And that's one of the beauties about being a human being is that things always change. And my dad used to always tell me chance favors the prepared mind. And chance is change and change will occur. And it's up to us as business owners to prepare our minds for that time when things will change. A vaccine is coming. Um, things are, I know things seem kind of miserable now because we're in the middle of winter and you know COVID cases are, are higher than ever. But I just heard the news today that my dad is getting vaccinated next Friday. I was so excited and like, that is just such a ray of hope and sunshine. And I'm hoping to give you that sense and that shift in mindset today um, about what you can do to change your own situation here in 2021. Because I don't know about you, but I was more than happy to leave 2020 behind. So uh, is it, if it's all right, I'm gonna share my screen and get into the content today. Uh, Cause I'm super excited to share some stuff with you today. I have a whole, uh, a whole presentation prepared for you uh, because I think it's so important that we think through and strategize what's going to happen next in 2021. And I look at this and maybe I'm just, you know, have the rose colored glasses on, but I like to think not, but I like to look at this as an opportunity because so many other people are going to let their negative heads get the better of them. And they're just going to stay status quo where you have an opportunity to get ahead of them quickly simply by de facto of the situation in the world today. So welcome, uh, Pivot and Profit in 2021. Innovate, Improve and Implement is all about what my education is about. And you know, you're know you in the right place if you know 2020 kind of did a little number on you. <laughs> uh, number two, you're trying to see where the market is changing, but it's a little challenging. I'm gonna help give you some clarity on that today. Number three, you need a strategy for leveling up in 2021. 2020 was kind of, you know, a downer and you want things different. Uh, maybe your motivation is a little bit in the tank because world events are stressing you out a little bit. Maybe you come and go. Maybe some days you feel positive and some days you feel a little bit down in the dumps. Uh, you're in the right place if, if that's been your uh, MO for the last few months. Number five, uh, you know, last year had a nagging stress to it and maybe you can't shake that. Uh, perhaps you're not sure of what's next, and maybe you have a plan for leveling up in 2020. You just need help, you know, kind of implementing it. Um, but most importantly, you need a strategy that will make a little bit of a difference this year and at least get you through to when things start to improve again. But I promise you, chance does favor the prepared mind. And if an opportunity comes to you in the future, in the next year in 2021, and you're not ready to take it, you're going to regret it. So let's get you ready to do that. I'm Julia Kelleher, uh, Nikon ambassador. Yeah, lots of letters, but they're not really important. The most important part is that I'm a mom and a business owner, and I take both very seriously. Uh, I, am, I specialize, of course, in family portraiture, newborn work, and then 
Um, I'm very, very passionate about helping photographers in their marketing business and sales education. It's not an easy subject to master. And over the years, uh, it has become my niche in education because I love business so much and there's nothing more rewarding to me than seeing a peer or a fellow photographer get to that six figure mark in their business and be able to support uh, their families with their passion, with their creative fuel, so to speak. So my studio is in Bend, Oregon. Uh, that's a kind of a picture of it in the background, but what you'll discover today is, and what I'm gonna talk to you is about the consumer mindset and today's market shift. Things happened quickly in 2020. I mean, one minute everything was fine, the next minute, kabam, we were all in the dumps. And we're gonna talk about what that did to the consumer mindset and how the economy shifted. And by knowing that, you'll be able to figure some things out to help yourself in 2021. Number two, three ways to pivot, quick and easy ways that will help you change your business in 2021. Uh, number three, how to up-level your profit without shocking your clients. That's always a big one. You know, we all start off in the digital shoot and burn era, or most of us do, and then we need to change things. And so I want to talk to you about doing that without actually providing that shock value <laughs> to your clients, because I think that's the scariest thing about uh, leveling up. Number four, shifting your mindset and kicking that kind of scattered, unmotivated head to the curb. It's really important. And then, of course, talking about solopreneur syndrome. Uh, it's become more and more prevalent in the COVID days because of us being in lockdown and being isolated. Uh, solopreneur syndrome is a challenge and be, doing this on your own can be really detrimental to your business. And I want to talk to you about overcoming that. So let's get into it. Number one, consumer mindset and today's market shift. Dang, things happened quick, didn't they? All of a sudden, March hit and we were like, whoa, <laughs> life is different. Things changed. The economy basically did a 180 in a matter of a few weeks. What it did was, is it widened the gap between low middle income and high income families, okay? Middle income families, frontline workers, people like that, um, not necessarily frontline, but like uh, folks who, not essential, I guess is what I should say. Non-essential folks lost jobs, companies pulled back, reduced income, moms have to start staying home because they're homeschooling. A lot of things shifted, but higher income families just hired help. Now, all of a sudden, there was a huge pool of people who needed work, so they hired them to help them out, right? People with savings who have extra money reinvested and then shifted their financial decisions to take advantage of what was happening in a down economy to be able to profit later. And this is the mindset of people who have money to invest, who have extraneous income. They look at downturn economies as opportunities. So they start reinvesting and shifting their financial decisions. And essentially, I mean, I hate to say it, but the rich got richer. And it's a sad part of reality with any time there's an economic downturn, but it happened in 2008 too. When the real estate market, market crashed, it was worse than it is now because something that had an, an asset that had value all of a sudden lost its value. Real estate, home ownership, commercial properties lost its value. And that downturn was way more impactful because so many wealthy people had put their investment and their monies towards these commercial entities, towards real estate, towards commercial property, towards development. And so back in 2008, the rich really struggled because their assets lost value. That has not happened at all during the pandemic. As a matter of fact, wealthy people have separated from the middle class and the middle class is slowly falling. Now, I do believe this will come back as soon as we have a vaccine in order, as soon as we have you know, things in place to bring life somewhat back to normal, restaurants are gonna kick in, schools are gonna kick in, things are gonna change uh, back to normal. But in the meantime, there's this disparity, there's this shift occurring and we need to be uh, cognizant of it. Now, the other thing that's kind of shifted in terms of psychological wellness is that our homes, our homes have become essentially our safe haven. Your, your COVID quarantine crew, so to speak, has your family has become so much more close knit to you, to us, to everyone. There are record sales right now in the home industry, especially you know, like we're in a small town. So a lot of urban area people who have thought about retiring in a small town or you know, getting away from the urban centers where COVID was really strong, they're all moving to the smaller towns. So real estate in these smaller towns is booming right now. Houses are going up like crazy. My husband's a general contractor and he's so busy he can hardly keep his head on straight. People, 
things, people want to improve their homes, even in urban areas where people are, you know, stuck because of jobs or family, or they're tied to some kind of city location, they want to improve their home since they have to stay there. So the remodeling industry, furniture, appliances, pools, outdoor kitchens, games, home theater, home tech, all of that has just exploded because people are looking at their homes as their safe haven and they're wanting to improve them and make them better. Their homes now represent something deeper than they ever have before. Manufacturing is down because of COVID and large gatherings. So supplies are down. So demand is up. People who have income right now and who have money are dying to improve their homes. And those who've gained this year are spending big. So your home is your inner circle. It's your safe haven. It's your life's love. Think about this in terms of the portrait industry. Now I'm gonna talk about wedding in a little bit, but in the portrait industry, this is where we as uh, business owners can really capitalize. We can tap into this shifting psychology of the consumer and thrive if we message correctly in our marketing. So I'm gonna implore you to really think about this hard, about what I've just listed out to you and how things have shifted psychologically, economically, physically for people. How can you tap into that? Well, if you're thinking the way I like to think, interior design, improving the home and focusing on a higher level client that has the money to do that. So I do want to say, if you're focusing on a middle to lower income ideal client, you probably especially need to think about shifting in 2021. And next, number two, I want to talk about those three ways that you can do that, okay? The first thing to do is to convert to a product-based business model. And of course, Graphy supports you enormously in this. And this is one of the huge reasons I have completely moved almost my entire product line over to Graphy Studio because of the uniqueness, because of the quality and the luxury impression, the luxury brand that Graphy brings to my work and to my product line, that is helping me to level up in 2021. Now, here's what I'm, another kind of mindset shift that I want you to think about. How, think Okay, so now we're going to kind of drop into, imagine that we just won the lottery and we have a lot of money, right? <laughs> I know it's a little hard, but just try to go there with me for a second. High-end clients have no time, but plenty of money. Everybody's got 24 hours in a day, right? You, me, the homeless guy down the street, and the high-end client we're trying to attract, right? So since high-end clients have money, they buy time. How do they do that? They do it by hiring out services they desire. So converting to a service product-based model means you will serve and handhold your clients from start to finish. In other words, you will save them time, right? So a done for you business model appeals to the high end client so much more than say a digital file model where you just provide the files and the client has to print on their own. That takes time. Of course, it's less money. So that model tends to serve a lower income client than a full service product based model. The luxury boutique studios in today's economy are thriving. I have students right now who have earned 50 to 100% more income in 2020 than they did in 2019, even with a worldwide pandemic in place. It's because they shifted to a luxury-based model. They began service and hand-holding their clients. They started offering a beautiful luxury product line in their business, and they leveled up in 2020 during a pandemic. So if it's, and these are, these are students from all genres, newborn, family, seniors, commercial, anything and everything out there, it doesn't matter, but they shifted to a different model and that's what helped them level up. Okay. They started targeting a client who has the money and who wanted to make their home, their safe haven and produce imagery in a tangible product that could, um, and decorate and enamor their homes and make them feel more safe, more love, more compassion, more empathy, more comfort in what they call their home. 
Now, clients in this target ideal, they expect to pay more for better service. Now, service means everything from designing things for their home, pre-planning everything, wardrobe, consults, tangible products, in-person assistance, uh, uh, installation, delivery. It means not letting your client lift a finger, saving them time. So think about in your business, what your clients have to do that spends time for them and then remove that and take that away. Now, if you wanna talk about perfecting your product line, back in November in my Facebook group, we did a free challenge where we did the five-day perfected product line challenge. So I'm gonna encourage you, if you're not part of our free Facebook group called Photography Business by, Demi by Design, you can join the Facebook group and look at all the archives. We have them listed as units and classes, so it's super easy to find. There's a workbook, live archives, step-by-step -step to actually build a product line literally in five days. Now, it'll probably take you five, more than five days to shoot it and get the samples in your studio. But for the most part, it's five days to getting yourself in place to uh, have a tangible product line that's simple and easy to implement in your studio that won't overwhelm you. And I think that's the biggest thing that, that photographers problem that you have is, is when you don't have a product line, it's like, oh, <laughs> somebody put a steak knife through my eye. I'm going to die. I can't do this. It's overwhelming. There's so many choices and options out there. It makes you want to scream. And so instead of focusing on it and doing it, anxiety gets the better of you and your brain just blanks out. You're like, what do I do? And you want me to price this too? It's challenging. So the free Facebook group, Photography Business by Design, go in there. It'll help you with that free challenge. Okay, we're still continuing with our three ways to pivot that will change your business in 2021. Not only do you have to up-level your service and go into a higher end market, but you have to price yourself there too. Pricing places you into a cer certain market or to a certain ideal client. Higher end clients look at pricing as a measure, as a measure of quality and service. I'm gonna say that one again because I think it's really important. Higher end clients look at pricing as a measure of quality and service. If something is too cheap, they look at it and they go, wait, what's wrong with it? That's awfully inexpensive. I'm not sure that's high quality. Have you done that before? I bet you have. Because even in, you know, like for instance, my husband, this is, this is kind of a funny little story. My husband uh, went to go buy DeWalt tools. He's addicted to DeWalt tools. And over Black Friday, he saw on Amazon the, these DeWalt tools for like $20 a piece, which is ridiculous because most of them are over 100 each for sure, power tools, you know? And so he looked at it and was like, oh my gosh, this sounds like too good to be true. And he didn't buy it because he didn't trust the price. He's like, oh, something's wrong with it. I'm going to buy that. It's going to come to me. It's going to be broken. It's going to be out of the box. It's going to be a problem and I'm going to have to return it. What a pain in the butt. I'm not going to do it. It's not even worth it. I'd rather just spend $100 on one that I know is good and, and, and the right price, okay? This is how people who care about a certain product look at it. They value the product so much that if it's too cheap, they won't buy it. Isn't that interesting? It's all sales and money block psychology. Cheap prices mean poor quality in their mindset. But here's the caveat. For them to pay more, you have to stand out and be unique in your area. High-end clients will insist on lower prices if they see what they're purchasing as a commodity. Let's repeat that again. High-end clients will insist on lower prices if they see what they're purchasing as a commodity. What is a commodity? A commodity is something you can get anywhere. Eh, it all looks the same to me. So ask yourself, if your website and your work and your products and your service look the same as everybody else's in your market, then chances are high-end clients are going to look at that and go, oh, well, I'll just get the cheaper one. Now, clients who truly care about photography and really are passionate about it, they're, and they're going to kind of look for the high-end model. Clients who are like, oh, I want this, but you know, I'm not that passionate about it. So uh, these services are all the same. So there's nothing really unique in my market. So I'll just go for the lowest price. 
Okay, so that means you need to work really hard and think through how you can stand out. Adding services to your business model, design, printing, installation, all that kind of thing, adds. Adding product, because so many photographers out there, I mean, how many times have I heard the phrase, my market's flooded, my market's flooded, it's saturated with photographers, I can't do that. Well, the reason you're saying that is because you look just like them. I, I'm I'm known for being blunt, <laughs> I hate to say it, but if you look like everybody else, you're gonna have issues and problems. You have to stand out. You stand out with a beautiful luxury product line, a branded look to your work, a, um, a branded look to your products even. Like my style is very light and fresh, clean, modern, kind of a commercial feel to it. My products speak the same language. And my images that I display my products in all have that same language going on for it. Does that mean I shoot dark and rich and elegant at times too? Of course, but I don't show it on my website. I don't show it on my products. I don't show it in my collateral, okay? I show what the brand speaks so that it stands out and is unique. Now, let's talk about the digital dilemma. To sell or not to sell those digital files, it's always the key question. I do. I sell files with a good reason and very careful consideration. I'm going to tell you those now. Files pad my cost of good so that create a collection sales is more profitable, averaging a 10 to 15% cost of good. Now the industry standard is like 25 to 30%. To me, that's hogwash. I want to make money doing what I love. And I'm a businesswoman first and a photographer second. So I, when I'm pricing products, I want to make sure that they meet that 10% to 15% cost of good and that there is a beautiful hierarchy of products to incentivize my client to want to purchase the next highest or more luxurious product. But offering the files with that product makes it easier to book clients since this is the product they think they want. Why do they think they want it? Because it's what they know. Most clients are not printing their work. They're not printing their iPhone pictures. They're leaving them on their cameras. They're sharing albums with family and friends. They're sharing images on social media. And so that's the limit of what they know is possible with their images. So that's what they think they want. So when I offer the files, it lowers any objection or barrier in the client's mind to book with me. It lowers the barrier to entry, okay? My clients leave the ordering appointment with all their files, a downloadable product. So this makes it unlikely that they will change an order or back out after the fact, thanks to my tight downloadable product sales policies. If you remove a downloadable product from my studio, the sale is final. And my package pricing accounts for this. Let's talk about that. I do create a collection. It works like this. I choose my, the client chooses their signature art. Then they, that can be a album, a wall art or wall series. And then they choose their digital files. Okay. They get them all in create a collection in either high or low resolution. And they get to pick. And obviously high resolution is much more money, but this model forces them to, of course, they all want all the files. So it forces them to purchase art along with those files. Now they can order create a, uh, a la carte. However, it's just files, it's just low resolution, and it's just a tiny selection of the files from their, uh, from their gallery. So it ends up that they, the barrier to entry is lower, but they end up incentivizing to buy more later because of the service, the design, the process, the brand, everything uh, just attracts and builds that trust to make them wanna purchase. I always tell my students, clients won't buy from you unless they absolutely trust you. Think about when you go to buy a high ticket item. So, you know, most of us photographers are not high income folks, but we still buy high ticket products. When you go to buy a car, a sofa, something, a big ticket product of some kind, you have to trust that what you're purchasing and from whom you're purchasing is a trustworthy person, especially at that price, right? So you have to, the, the salesperson or the business owner, it's behoove of them to build what I call a runway, okay? 
a long runway makes it easy for that airplane to take off gently and without any issues, without any turbulence. Spending that money on that sale is no problem because they've had a long time to prepare down the runway. The no like, and trust aspects are built with the business owner. If the runway is short and the business owner is saying, hey, buy quickly, take off, turbulent, take off, it's, it's crazy, the plane has trouble getting off the air, there's lots of regret, the clients have um, sales, uh, sales regret, or um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? When people have, uh, when they leave the sales appointment kind of regretting their choice, you know, sticker shock, that kind of thing, you have to build the runway long, and that's part of what it means to be a good luxury business owner. But this pricing model earns me an average sale of about $2,000 per client, just under that. I get to sell tangible art and they get the files. So the benefit to this is there's no set packages. So I have no ceiling on my pricing. You can buy as much as you want, but I do have a soft minimum. The options are custom. The client can order whatever art piece they want. It's basically a la carte sales or luxury sales with two rules, buy art, buy files, that's it. It's flexible to the customer so they don't have to purchase something like a set package where uh, they don't get what they want. They only get what they want and need under this flexible credit collection model. And it lends itself to a high-end feel because it has that boutique a la carte feeling to it. And of course, it's incentivized for me for profit. Those files pad my cost of goods because I'm selling the files with the art piece. My art pieces are priced so that my, and my credit collection are priced so that my average sale hits a thousand no matter what. When then with the session fee that adds on even more. And then the pre-consultation process, the product information and education process, the design process with the client encourages them to wanna do something more than just the minimum. Hence, that gets my average up to where I want it to be and my business in a multi six figure annual revenue place. Now, the third way, especially for you wedding and event photographers, you have an incredible skill set that will allow you to pivot into commercial work to bridge the gap between COVID and when we have a vaccine and things begin to get back to normal. Commercial work, I have even pivoted into that this year and it has done wonders for my business. There are so many small businesses struggling right now. And here's the thing, where are they allowed to market? Where are they allowed to market right now? Online. Everyone is focused on online marketing. And what do online marketers need in their business to be successful in their marketing efforts? Content, visual content. They need images. These restaurants are trying to promote takeout and to-go orders, and I have seen some of the worst food pictures of my entire life online in the last 10 months. Why can't you go help them photograph their food beautifully, build relationships with these people so that when they're ready to pivot, they will come to you for this commercial work. And even those businesses that are thriving, they still need online imagery. They need visual content for their businesses, social media content, website headers, headshots, lay flats. They need so much out there. And this is your opportunity, wedding photographers, to bridge the gap by pivoting into that market. Adding a new specialty in an area that badly needs photography can inject life into your creativity as well as your bottom line. So the only true way to market now is online. It's crowded and businesses need to stand out. So if you shoot commercial work for businesses to help them market, you are going to be able to pivot your business in that direction. And wedding photographers are so skilled at this. You have the ability to go into any lighting environment and find imagery. You are a picture taker, not a maker. You can see a moment and capture it. That is a skill that is beyond anything that I can do. I am a maker. I love to be in the studio and put things together and then envision the shot and then take it. But then wedding photographers have the ability to just spontaneously and improvisationally, if that's a word, go into an environment and shoot beautiful imagery on the fly. Okay, you can tell a story. Tell the story of a business and what they're happening to them. Product photography, lay flats, web images, social media content, headshots, environmental portraits, brand shoots, there's so much opportunity in this area to help people. Work with these vendors to develop relationships within the business community in your area. 
And I want to tell you a couple of success stories of some students of mine who have done this and literally changed their business during COVID. Julie Clyde is a photographer in actually a fine art photographer in Australia. So she began photographing food to help restaurants promote their takeout services during lockdown. The restaurant, it was a pizza place, like a, just a mod pizza place, kind of like any pizza place here in the US, submitted the image to the Australian version of Uber Eats. Get this, the president of the company called her and asked her to photograph all 26,000 restaurants. There's no way that Julie could do this unless she franchised her business, hired photographers all around the country and made it happen. But she is now traveling her region and making a killing shooting food. She didn't take all 26,000 restaurants, but she did take them all in her area. And now she is doing amazing. It has translated to her portrait business as these vendors aim to partner with her. And of course she can pick and choose the high-end restaurants that she wants to work with to make her fine art business fly. And she's making connections with other vendors, not even in the restaurant industry, again, to help her get the word out about her own business, what she's doing and build that preparedness so that when chance comes, she will be ready and she will kill it above everyone else. Another student of mine, Marcella Limon, started a magazine. She pitched to her local chamber of commerce a brilliant idea to create a magazine of local businesses during COVID-19. So she photographs each business, tells their story. She's on lockdown, nothing else to do. Might as well go do that, right? They offer a coupon to their business inside the magazine. And then the chamber sells the magazine with the coupons to local residents to celebrate and support small business in the community. We are in an incredible time period where communities are willing to go the extra mile to help local businesses because of the trouble we're having. Everyone is in the same boat. So you as a business owner can take advantage of this mentality in your market to market and brand your services. In the end, Marcella wins, the businesses win, and the chamber wins, and the customers win as well. It helps everyone. These are the kinds of things that I want you to begin thinking about in your area to help you pivot. And yes, you may have to photograph some of these things for free initially, but the payoff down the road will be huge, huge to you. And then of course you get that word of mouth and that referral and it just builds and builds and builds. Yes, I know in your business leveling up may mean a price increase. And of course that is fearful. The fear of losing your clients is absolutely real. I understand it. And so many of my students have gone through this, but getting on the other side is so worth it. So number three, you need to up-level your profit without shocking your clients. So a good pricing model that still offers your clients what they want while selling what you need really is the best of both worlds. It is better to lose clients that can't spend with you anyways than hang on just because it's, quote, comfortable, right? And now is the time to do it. Now is the time to shift focus and change because consumers are expecting businesses to do that. Fewer clients with a higher level of service and a higher sales average means less work for more money. Do you really want to stay up editing till all hours of the night? No. I work Monday through Friday, no questions asked. As a matter of fact, I work three days a week on my education business and I work two days a week on my portrait photography business. And my portrait photography business still is successful only working at it part-time, okay? So that's because my pricing is set up to help me do that. And that expands me to be able to offer other services to a different marketplace. Students, photography education, I love teaching. That's part of my business, okay? It's about 50-50. And I love that because it, being able to up-level the portrait side of the business, charge more, higher average, allows me to take fewer clients, but still make the same money I was before, which of course opens me up to get other resources of revenue, okay? And that is huge. When you as a business owner are diverse in your revenue and where you get your income from, then if one source of revenue begins to fall flat, the other one can help uh, carry the load, so to speak. So by marketing to a new ideal client, in other words, a higher end client that will pay more, you'll shift naturally into higher profits. 
But here's the caveat again, once again, the brand of your business has to match the price. If your business is kind of struggling along, it's, it's a little inconsistent, you don't really have things all in place, you know you're a little scattered, you're, you're feeling all over the place, chances are things aren't cohesive enough for the brand to match the price. So I strongly encourage you to, to focus these next two months on building your business to be what you dream it can be. Okay. And it doesn't take a ton of money to do this. It takes organization. It takes strategy. It takes thinking through things. It means photographing. It means, you know, you can do this without spending a fortune, just make it all align and cohesive and look like it's all speaking from the same business, the same brand, the same artist. Okay. So number four, shift your mindset to kick your inner critic to the curb. We all have an inner critic. Maureen does, Danielle does, everybody does, I do. We have this voice in our head that tries to protect us, okay? 2020 has given us all a, a lot of uncertainty. We're all kind of sitting here going, what's going to happen? We have this hope in our hearts that things are going to get better, and they will, but when, you know, sorry. Julia, there you are. Oh, I think we lost you still. I think the mic is, sorry. I hear a little static though. So maybe unplug it and plug it back in. Uh, nothing yet. It's gonna be really hard, Julia, for me to fill in for you, let me say. <laughs> You know, I, I feel like I know you really well, but giving your keynote presentation, you know, is is probably not likely. But I could, you know, I could read the text. Um, I could tell all of you how amazing Julia is as she dances for us, and we lip we're, we can we can listen to Julia via her her lips. Still nothing. Okay, well let's keep working on it. We. We'll get there. This is live. Everybody that's watching, you probably know I'm from, I'm tuning in from my home and I've had to turn my camera off because I have three children. Hey, oh. yes. You're back. Yes. Oh, thank you. But you know what? <laughs> this is, I, I think I might have pressed a button. <laughs> no worries. I'm going to myself, mute myself here and I'll let you continue. Sorry, Julia. Where, where was I? Was I, was I back here? I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Was I back here? Uh, there we go. You, you, was it 31? Anyway, I'll start there. How's that sound? <laughs> I'll start there. Um, I'm sorry about that, guys. Technical problems. You know how, you know how it is. Live TV, behind the scenes. Break that fourth wall, baby. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so number four is really about shifting your mindset to kick your inner critic to the curb. We all have an inner critic. 
uh, every single one of us, including myself, including Maureen. And um, it's so important to grab a hold of it to help propel your business forward. 2020 has given us a lot of uncertainty and we're still in that state and uncertainty triggers the fear or stress response. It hyper extends your amygdala in your brain and makes you uh, release adrenaline and cortisol in your body. And it amplifies more and more and more if you don't mindfully control it or until the stimulus stops, COVID stops. So we're all going to have this sense of uncertainty and anxiety unless we are able to mindfully uh, recognize it and control it. Anxiety, even if it's just the soft underlying anxiety that you don't even really notice, it, it can induce confusion, scattered thoughts, and it can cause like a lack of motivation to move forward. I know I have felt that. There have been times the last year where a whole month would go by and I'm like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit here. I just want to work on my crafts and play with my kid and not do anything. Okay, that is anxiety. You shut down the fight or flight or freeze response. So the way to kind of control your inner critic is to watch your thoughts. You have to recognize that that voice, the ego in your head is not really you. It's part of you, but it doesn't define you. I named mine George. <laughs> George is my inner critic. And the beautiful part about naming it is that I can kind of set George aside and go, okay, this is just George and it's just thoughts. And if I have the ability to recognize and watch my thoughts, then that means technically there's two of me, right? Kind of woo-woo, but it's true. So if there's two of you and you're aware of the fact that you have this inner critic, it will help you learn to control it. And simply by watching your thoughts without any judgment, without any reservation, without just to watch as an objective viewer, you will find your anxiety beginning to drop. Now, COVID has really forced us all to work alone. And solopreneur syndrome is a, tr is a real thing and it can kill your business because your ability to problem solve creatively gets a squished. With no input from other folks, family, friends, other peers, your ideal ideas can get kind of stale and boring. It's lonely, it's kind of daunting at times. And your inner critic has a much easier time controlling you and maintaining your stress response when you are doing this on your own. Business owners have to have peer-to-peer -peer interaction in your industry. Our significant others and spouses sometimes don't understand and can't provide the feedback and open mind that we desperately need. If you're an entrepreneur and your significant other is works for corporate America, totally different, totally different person, animal. They work different ways than you and they have trouble helping to give you feedback. Others who walk in your shoes know where you've been and can, can guide you and can spark ideas. You know how when you're talking with a friend, a photography friend, and they'll say something and it'll spark an idea in you and you're like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. What about this? And then they get another idea and it's just like this escalated inspiration of ideas that comes through. That's what's so important about being an entrepreneur. Other people can just simply give you ideas that either spark a new solution or help you chart the same course in your own market. An objective viewpoint from a qualified person is unbiased and trustworthy. So you need to go out and find a circle of peers who can be your cheerleader, your confidant, and your shoulder to cry on. And that could just be as simple as calling up a photographer friend on Zoom who's halfway across the country. My sister and I do this all the time. My sister is a professional photographer in Southern California as well. And she and Michelle Parsley, my other friend, we get on the phone all the time and sometimes we'll just work together. So you have to find a place where you can discover people who are like you. Now, I don't really believe that Facebook is the answer because it can be super shallow. It's very distracting because there's other stuff on it as well. Um, some people who like to give advice can be very backhanded. It depends on the group, of course. Like the graphy group is awesome. I'm very particular about making sure my group doesn't have any bullies or negative people. Um, but the info can be very selective. You don't know who's giving you information and it can be very diluted. So I encourage people to look for a mastermind or create their own mastermind who have the same vested interest in you in growing their business. So, you know, I have a mastermind of my own that I'm going to tell you about in a minute, but you need a place where education is free flowing and honest and private so that members are open books. 
Uh, so their help is not publicly available to just anyone. And they can be expensive, so you know, be be that and keep that in mind. But it doesn't have to if it's online. So before I tell you about that, I want to go over what we've kind of learned in this mini class, so that you can review what we've talked about and kind of take some notes and really set yourself straight and give yourself some bullet points of what you're going to be doing to kind of pivot and move forward in 2021. So we've talked about how the market shifted and what potential clients are spending on. We've talked about where you need to shift, the three ways to adjust your business to move into today's thriving market. Luxury businesses are doing a lot better than businesses that serve a middle to lower income market, okay? We've talked about how to raise your prices without your clients freaking out, add services. And you know, even if you are a digital model, you can add a product line to those digitals using a creative collection model so that you will pad your sales. And it's when you offer product line and service and installation and that customer experience, that is worth the extra money. It's just about marketing and spinning it in a way that makes the client realize it has value. Clients will spend if they recognize that what they're getting has value to them. And it's about you learning to brand and market and message that to the right person, speak their language so that they then look at your product and services as something worth spending the money on, okay? Number four, we talked about how to not let 2020 get the best of your head and how to conquer self-doubt by recognizing that your inner critic is a separate entity from you and watching your thoughts with that objectivity and that um, just relaxedness and non-judgment that comes along with kind of separating yourself from the negative thoughts that go through your mind. And number five, we're going to talk about where to find that finding a like-minded business owner can help you kind of conquer solopreneur syndrome. And if you want to do it with me, I would be happy to welcome you. We are going to open our membership program, the Five Carat Collective, for 48 hours in honor of Imaging USA and my graphic studio talk here. So just to tell you a little bit, 5CC, the Five Carat Collective, is an online mastermind. It's basically a monthly membership that will help you grow your business and your mindset. We have weekly live meetings. Right now, we're in the middle of a huge 10-week series called the Clarity Collaborative. And since so many people are locked down, this is going to help you really build and solidify and refine the internal structure of your business, your website, your marketing, your sales process, your product line, your pricing, all of that. So that when you do reopen or when clients begin and things start getting back to normal, you are so prepared and ready to up-level everything in your business in 2021. We even have social events. We have a wine night every month. What started as survival during the April lockdown is now our funnest meeting in 5CC. We all connect on the last Thursday or second to last Thursday of the month in uh, 5CC via Zoom. It's called wine night and you just never know what will happen at wine night. It is a social fun gathering. It just like it raises those oxytocin levels in your head, you know? And then of course we offer surprise classes in shooting, creativity, Photoshop, and more. My two flagship courses are inside as well. Market Like You Mean It and Sell Like You Mean It are both inside and part of the membership inside 5CC. And of course, with Clarity Collaborative right now, which is our 10-week series here in January and February, we are doing huge goal setting and accountability. Folks are setting their annual goals and I am holding you accountable for achieving those goals and checking in with you quarterly to make sure you're on track. And when you're accountable to someone else, it definitely lights the fire under your booty and makes you want to get stuff done. And of course, it's such a positive and forthright community. We don't BS. We don't, you know, sugarcoat things, but we're also so positive and supportive. Um, it is a mastermind that's worth quite a bit. And because I'm able to offer it in an online settings, we uh, offer it for only $39 a month and you can cancel at any time. So if you want to do that, go to 5ccollective.com. It's open for 48 hours. I would love to have you join us. So I want to take some questions. I don't know how much time we have, uh, Maureen, but if there are some questions out there, I would love to help folks out. It looks like we're, we're getting a little close on time. I really pushed the limit on that time, didn't I? <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Julia. And so where the questions are posted is our Graphy Studio YouTube link. And I see there's a lot of questions and a lot of your students are there. And, and I've been... 
fielding some of them and I might forward them over to you to see if I could have you um, respond to them and, and directly. Um, I would love that, yeah. This has been an amazing hour. Um, we did a Zoom together, it was last May, and I just wanted to take this opportunity to let you know how you have helped so many photographers with the advice that you provided back then when they needed it most. And just like today, the ideas that you have shared with everybody tuning in from around the world that'll watch this today and moving forward, has, is, it's really going to make a difference because mindset is a powerful thing, isn't it? You know, we can be in this fear zone and if we're stuck in a fear zone, it's hard to get into into a learning zone and if we're you know then that a lot prevents us from getting into a business growth zone so creating and shifting the way that we think about these opportunities and i love the story that you shared about your husband with dean walt because i used to work with stanley before before graphy studio and stanley is the parent company of dewalt and i've talked to the old stanley group and and they're having record sales with do it yourself because oh i bet <laughs> Improvements are going through the roof, as you mentioned, and Peloton bikes, you know, they're having record mm -hmm. sales in, in the, in they're, they're not, they're not cheap. You know, Peloton bikes are, you know, $2,500 uh, at pool right. sales. You mentioned in your, your keynote are, are at record sales. So well, there's, we went to order a hot tub for our new house and it was like an eight month wait for a hot tub. Yeah. It's crazy. And like, I mean, think about that. just, we have to like open our brains a little bit as photographers and go, what does that mean? That means people like, think especially about the women out there who, who are interior design and like changing their homes and making them like more what they've always dreamed of now that COVID is here. They want family portraits. They want their wedding images on the wall. Wedding photographers should start a service to their old clients who maybe didn't print or only did albums and like offer a service, go, we're gonna start doing in-home design services of your wedding. We would love to make the story wall of your wedding. And now that, you know, your home is becoming this place where you want it to, you know, really sh show the light and love that you have there so that, cause you're stuck there, you know? So like you could spin and market that so beautifully with wedding photos from past 10 years even. I don't even have my wedding photos up and I'm like, oh, I gotta do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I know Dario is gonna wanna jump in as well. And I wanna just quickly say, again, um, to those viewers, um, not only have you learned so much from Julia in this last hour and more information on how to join her group, but, but there's some things that Graphy Studio and Julia are working on together that will also be announced mm -hmm point that we're really excited about because you have your finger on the pulse in this industry you know um you know what is needed in addition to the combination of graphy and the team in italy and those two things when they collide that's when magic typically happens so we're really excited about those opportunities moving forward now if we could just get covid kind oh, of all the sketches all the sketches and the drawings and the back and forth and the Oh, I, I'm just chomping at the bit to share it. I know we can't right now, but um, yeah, it's been a project in the works. Of course, COVID has slowed us down a little bit, but um, you know, my interior design brain and uh, my, combined with my husband's help with his engineering and, and home decor, you know, my husband builds homes and commercial properties. So I'm heavily influenced by architecture and uh, combine that with my interior design training and love Oh, and you guys, the, the magic is just, gonna, <laughs> I'm so excited. I just, I can't, I can't wait until we can spill the beans. It's just going to be, it's really going to change things, I think, in the industry. And um, honestly, I don't think I've ever um, seen something that unique. I don't think I've ever seen something that unique in, um, in the industry. So, and of course, you guys are perfect for it because you always look forward to unique things and, and want to stand out. You're like the epitome of what I teach. And that is to be exemplary and stand out in your market, you know, and you guys do that beautifully. I think that we all have appreciated the uh, scientific approach that you have demoed today with your presentation, Julia. And um, so personally, I was thrilled, but the whole thing was amazing. Some of the slides were like, you know, we should print wall arts with those slides, just, you know, <laughs> 
taking care, you know, that we all are focused on these bullet points that you have carefully put together because they made so much sense. And like Thank I said, you. because I love the scientific approach, there was nothing there that was subjective, like your vision of or your impression of something. It wasn't like, you know, yeah, of course, it's your approach to the market, but everything was absolutely scientifically proved. And that's amazing. That's the value. Thank you for saying that. And, 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 and I'm glad that you say, you know, you help, uh, you help us having ideas and making, you know, unique objects. And this helps me introducing, you know, the next session because you are you will see firsthand when we will be able to, to be together in the same room again. Uh, but actually the new production floor with all the remodeling that we are undergoing. And like I said in the opening today, uh, our guys and, and girls are moving things overnight during the weekend, you know, making sure that we are reshaping literally the entire workflow. Emory knows how articulated it is because the more we give you the freedom degrees, the more complex is the load of work that we have to deal with. But you know what? In, in math, as well as in physics, the most elegant solutions are the simplest. Simplest, right? Yes. So the simplest solutions oh, yeah. to super tough, complex. Uh, I, have a, I have a degree in biology. My background is all scientific. <laughs> Physics, chemistry, you name it. <laughs> I'm a colleague. I have the same degree, so I'm glad you said that. But you know, <laughs> you know what? It's great. And you will see in the next, uh, in the next hour or so uh, a lot of our production department I'm glad to introduce finally our walk through uh, the different production steps, all the new technologies that we are recently acquired. And it's great because for the same reasons we were naming before, 2021 is going to be definitely interesting. And we need to equip, we need to be geared for the next, uh, the next season and the next world coming, the new normal as they call it. And it's plenty of possibilities, plenty of possibilities opportunity there's so much opportunity we just have to shift our mindset to be able to see it and if, if your mindset is not in the right place your brain won't allow you to take action exactly. and do the step-by-step -step tasks it needs to go forward but if you can shift that and see those opportunities it all of a sudden makes you go oh there's an opportunity here that no one else sees let's grab it and just what Maureen has told me about what you guys are doing I'm just like a horse chopping at the bit, like, oh, come on, let's go, I can't wait. <laughs> it's so exciting to hear some of the possibilities of what you guys are gonna be able to do. And I'm just tickled to be a part of it. I can't even tell you how exciting it is. It's just an honor and a privilege, it really is. Thank you so much for having me. So look forward to that. So yeah, um, okay. So Maureen, Julia, thank you so much for this business class today. I